Greetings everybody, welcome to G4G on YouTube. Today we are in Marvel Realm of Champions, and we're going to talk about how things have been going in this game. So, again, the game continues to be uh, a bit divisive within the community. There's people who have fun with it, and I am definitely interested in seeing how the game progresses. It has not been particularly frustrating for me, as I'm not in the upper ranks of PvP, so not really getting affected by this issue that people are saying where, you know, they're trying hard to get their wins, but they're running into bots, and bots are ruining the experience for them because bots are just not playing at a very skilled level. The issue seems to be is that when you get to the higher ranks of PvP, and people pull a bot, a bot will be bad enough to drag them down, cause them a loss, and then they can drop below the tier that they're in. Um, in my opinion, I, I sort of hate when PvP is not milestoned like this. This is a dislike for that system that goes all the way back to Marvel Avengers Alliance, where... Um, as you know, sometimes overnight, if you played it overnight or in the last weekend of a season, you could very easily take huge drops. If, if somebody goes to sleep for the kind of standard eight hours, they may wake up and find that they've dropped 200 points or more simply overnight. And it's kind of ridiculous to have been an adamantium or a vibranium player and like wake up and be in diamond or something like that and that is apparently what's going on here it's not like you're away from the game and you're losing rank but the bots are causing bad enough matches that you can derank this is a kind of game that i honestly think when you hit a certain pvp level you should not be able to get knocked below it so um, you know it my Iron Man over here is at recruit if I made it to warrior but then suffered a loss like I don't feel that I should be knocked out of warrior back down to recruit I feel like he should be just to the zero level of warrior and you should never be able to drop below the zero level for a tier uh, that really seems to be happening in this game, and it seems to be bots are causing it. So here is where my car characters currently stand. Uh, Storm is one of my best, as is Black Panther. Iron Man and Hulk are some of my weakest. However, but if I go over to Black Panther, you'll see that I'm in Warrior. Cap is not, but his power is good. Sorcerer Supreme is not, but Spider-Man is, and Storm is. Um, I really think Storm is still a very, very good character for this game, and I feel like so many matches are won because of a good Storm really doing uh, a lot of crowd control. So let's take a look at some of the messages that they have been giving us. So they sent us a Celestial Crate. A little while ago there is a sneak peek on the realm of March that is uh, available we've got a message on that the ability to rate the game which I'm kind of a little concerned how people might be rating it to be honest a survey which I think I'm actually going to do. I would like to do a survey about this game. World Quest got introduced. Now, there aren't any currently, but we had World Quest running from the 22nd to the 26th. And now it says again on March 1st to the 5th. However, um, it disappeared earlier uh, in the day. So when I went into it just a little bit before, uh, it was gone already. There are Celestial Weapons available in the store. And release notes, and of course the introduction of World Quests. Now, what really, really concerns me about this game is if we go to the store, 
Look at this. A hundred dollars. Every day I come in to the game, it throws up a character, and it says, okay, here is this one hundred dollar offer. And there's an Iron Man one. There is a Storm one. Um, there is the Cyclone Flail for Storm. The Proton Cannon for Iron Man, 25 bucks, 25 bucks. A Scarlet Witch looking bundle for the Sorcerer Supreme character, pretty cool. Tie-in with one division that just had its finale today at the time of recording this. Storm bundle, Storm bundle at 30, Storm bundle at 20. Horn Fist for Hulk at 30. These prices, I mean, f 50 bucks. The range and the randomness of this $20 minimum up to 100 is absolutely fucking insane. I cannot believe a game like this is running $100 offers. And I cannot honestly believe that whaling in this game is is really going to make that much of a difference. Uh, Kabam, in my opinion, has one of the greediest repu uh, greediest reputations thanks to Contest of Champions. I, I've said it in so many of my Marvel videos and everything. Um, I just feel that they celebrate failure way too much. When you spend your hard-earned credits, and I mean, money in Contest of Champions basically translates into next to nothing. Five dollars, their cheapest offer, is basically you giving somebody on the street five dollars and then giving you a penny back and saying, you know, enjoy your day, go buy that house. I find the real life to game currency conversion in Contest of Champions is awful. Now, I used to do, I think it was like Arcane Empires by them, and I never really paid attention to that store. And it, uh, that was a long, long time ago. That was like on one of my original three tablets that I played that game. But Contest of Champions, I just think, is, is an absolute ripoff. And it's really sad to see Kabam doing it again in Realm of Champions. Now, this Proton Cannon for 100 doesn't sound too bad. However, my Iron Man isn't at that tier, so I'm not going to do it. I could get this one for Storm because I am at the Defender tier, but first I want to look at her weapons and see actually what I have. So I have a Cyclone Flail already. Um, there would be no use in me buying it. Now the dailies in this, they are pretty good. Um, I often do a match or two per day. I, I definitely do my scrap in a day. I do my rank up in a day. I, I don't always get the three matches in a day, and sometimes I'm not always getting to the events. But this store really, really has me concerned. Um, I don't know if there is a realm in which Kabam is speaking to the community that I'm missing, you know, I know when Square is talking to the community, they have the war tables, they did a Reddit post that I just did a video on, um, Marvel Future Fight at least seems to be responding to, uh, you know, some reviews on the store, I really haven't checked to see if Realm of Champions has, but, you know, I see them put out a blurb on Facebook and people like, when are we going to get new champions? When are we going to get new stuff? And they never say anything. They seem to be a very one-way street. So, I don't know if they're listening to the community and I don't know if they're putting their plan out there uh, anywhere. Um, well... I take that back. There are some things that I knew about. Like, I, I do know that world quests were coming, and to a degree, I knew the celestial weapons were coming, but I don't really know their vision. And I'm not exactly too sure really what their long plan is. Like, if you go to a failed game, like, say, Anthem, we knew what their attempt was at the long game. 
they didn't stick to it they didn't meet it covid was not an issue at the time so um that was never the issue for why anthem was having issues but like this game you know i want to hear a little bit more about what their idea is because i feel that there is so much more that this game can do I, I i think we could definitely get more heroes especially the ones that we've seen um in some of the trailers that that show off new ones um you know like deadpool and wolverine and everything uh, it, it has been a hot minute since we got cap uh and i think we need sort of like a world map that we can control what's going on and maybe it's something that they will only reserve for alliances because it makes sense but when i hit fight and i like i want to see this map i want to touch the screen and scroll around this map i maybe want to click a zone and fight there like defender of the crown on the old commodore 64 or um uh, dragon riders of pern or risk is a board game i've never played risk to be honest but you know i do know something about it or like axis and allies or shogun which was essentially axis and allies but um with ronin and samurai <laughs> To, to be stuck here and just to be able to hit enter and nothing else like I, I want more out of it and i always thought that's what we would get with this game when we were seeing the previews like here okay i hit stronghold and it changed the map but like i, I want to touch this purple island and see what's going on over there or fight over there um maybe or uh, you know this onslaught maybe i don't want to fight in this zone maybe i want to like fight in the desert zone up north or something like that i i i that was my expectation for the game when i happened to see uh you know a lot of the media early on now they have made some great ui elements the fact that i can shift my character over here before jumping in and fighting i think is great um, we have a new alliance button. Let's see what the flag does. Ah, alliance events, which kind of sucks for me. You know, I'm not in alliance. I don't really intend to join an alliance here. I don't want another game where I'm meeting daily standards after, you know, Strike Force and DC Legends, even really Future Fight. Um, but I haven't been sticking with Future Fight. I still like going to the stash and seeing which characters inventories are getting a little full like my cap is getting full a little bit um it's cool seeing some new weapons i think this game really needs a transmog system if you don't know what transmog means it's popular in many rpgs and for me my big experience with it is world of warcraft that is where you can get a piece of gear and learn the look of it or the aesthetic of it but then apply it to other gear um, that you find less attractive but may have better stats so for example if i like the look of this shield this tiamat's guidance tiamat's guidance but it's so underpowered compared to the standard cap shield i would like to apply that look to this shield and maybe go for caps like more tron look and stuff like that helmet um that body armor um these gloves actually i kind of should be well see here's the thing here's where this game gets you a little bit these gloves are a bit better than what i'm wearing but those gloves down there are part of a set so as you can see, it's it's kind of, you know, this game's got a lot of first world problems in it. Uh, and I can, well, I can do the upgrade, which will get it a little bit closer. So it's, it's within 10 points now. Um, but, you know, I have a set bonus over here. And that is, that is a pretty common thing. 
you face in MMOs. Like, do you want to, especially World of Warcraft, do you want to break a set bonus in order to have upgraded gear? And I'm sure out there somewhere there is a Realm of Champions... Uh, you know, dedicated website where maybe they talk about that stuff. I'm not really too sure if Reddit does. Reddit mostly just seems to be complaints about the game. I don't know if there's like builds out there or um, I did see at one point somebody put out um, sort of like a gear guide. Uh, like, okay, if you're building cap, you want to build health and armor if you're building storm you want to do this or that so i it's it's a fun game when i play it it is fun i don't particularly find it frustrating um i actually find some of the pve missions a little more frustrating when somebody really isn't doing what they're supposed to and occasionally i will get into a pvp match as uh, you know, cap or a crowd controller like Storm and wind up doing more damage than somebody like an Iron Man who is, you know, dedicated DPS. And I'm like, dude, why why did I out damage you? And, you know, sometimes that's the loss. But I never really get angry at this game. I, I never get into a match. I'm like, this dude right here, this is why we lost. And then, like, um, you know, close the game and flip the tablet across the bed and be like, you know, screw this game, I can't stand it. It, it just doesn't get me um, that upset. I don't seem to be as emotionally invested in this game as, say, like, you know, old Marvel Avengers Lions PvP, or even Marvel Duel, to compare to a more recent game. I, I think it is because I'm so angry at the store and the prices, and I think... Because it's a Kabam game, now this is kind of balanced, this is going to be interesting. Because it's a Kabam game, I have lower expectations on it, especially when it comes to the prices. Because I just find Kabam to be greedy as hell. So, how's this game been going for you guys? Are you still playing it? Did you get to do world quests? Um... Does the game really open up at, you know, the higher levels of gear that I don't have yet? Like, oh, you know, you really need to play more, go deeper, you gotta get that Iron Man weapon here, and you have to really use that Storm Flail, it really changes how she plays. I, you know, I admit, I don't know um, how the higher tiers are going in PvP, because I kind of don't uh, compete there. So, you know, maybe that, um, that weird, like, hexagonal shield for cap is so much better than the one I'm using. Or maybe, like, you know, what I'm seeing from Iron Man that I don't have, um, maybe that's, you know, something that's a heck of a lot better than what I've been running. And, uh, maybe I'm just not experiencing it to its fullest. However, I, you know, I have fun with the game. I, I definitely have fun with the level that I play the game at, and I'm rarely ever uh, frustrated at the game, but I'm not sure how our core was dinged up a little bit before anybody got there. So what do you guys think? Are, are you still playing Realm of Champions? Do you have uh, issues and, and like complaints with it? And what do you think the game needs to be better. Also, did you think the game was going to be like what I thought and be a little bit like a risk? Um, or that the world map would be uh, far more interactive than it is uh, currently where maybe you would be picking your zones and your missions. And, you know, hey, did you get to do any world quests? Uh, I was able to get some, but also, what's your opinion on all these $100 offers that are in the store? I just think that is straight ridiculous. I, I don't, I wouldn't spend um, $100 on something in, in World of Warcraft. And that's, you know, a main PC 
triple A game and everything. I mean, you know, one of those pets that goes to charity or something like that. I, if I had some tie to one of the charities that it was going for, you know, like if maybe I had lost a family member to cancer and they were doing, um, you know, cancer, you know, fight cancer foundation or something like that. You know, that's a little bit different, but just straight up a hundred dollars in a mobile game to make my uh you know doctor strange look like scarlet witch or to get a better shield on cap and a helmet i just i think is absolutely ridiculous i think they're shooting for the moon and i almost wonder if they just made the game to be out there for a very short life get a lot of money and um end it and it's I feel like this very conspiracy theory ish because I feel like this game has had effort put into it and the thought of it just being a you know a little temporary money grab that grabs a lot of money from people and then they shut it down within a year I don't want to believe that that's how it's gonna go but you know maybe some signs do point to it so let's see how we did here so there's me at 32% of the damage, and sort of what I was talking about, I'm 3 and 4. It's one of the few times I've actually had a, a, a losing kill-death ratio. But I did 32% of the damage, which is the same as an Iron Man, who was supposed to be DPS. Uh, at least their Storm did okay, but their Iron Man on the other side really was particularly good. So what do you guys think of the game? Are you still playing? And, uh, you know... What uh, what do you think can make this game a little bit better? If you have any thoughts on it. Thanks for checking out the video here on G4G. Hoping to talk to you guys sometime in the future in some other videos.